Okay. Let's get the ludes on. Dead Randy, the sexy ne necromancer. Harmony Arc, episode three. Polymorpheus Pollyanna. A new visitor from the underworld arrives in the bone zone. A salacious succubus named Sally. Marveled by his accomplishment, Sally becomes enamored with the dead Randy, demanding that the pair revoke their demonic job descriptions and become mutual lovers. Shocked at the idea that another demon could love him, and much to the dismay of the hordes of zombie girls, Randy vows to become Sally's boyfriend. Look at those teeth. Poor dead Randy, seduced by the idea of exclusive affection. Like my den mother always says, love a hundred people, and a thousand people will love you back. She looks really happy right sitting there. Dead Randy the Sexy Necromancer, Harmony Arc, Episode 4, Trouble in Paradise. After a few months of unrelenting ravaging, Randy and Sally start to become bored of their exclusivity. But while Randy aches to share his love with the rest of the village, Sally demands that he spends his pent-up affection in, on grinding through their turbulent relationship. Bad move, Sally. You got two folks going against their nature of sharing happiness with the world, desperately trying to keep their happiness between each other. Share it. Dead Randy, the Sexy Necromancer, Harmony Arc, Episode 5, Monogamy, Madness. Finally, Sally and Randy see the error of their ways. After an amicable breakup and a promise to <coughs> remain sh sharing a portion, of, albeit small one, of their love between each other, Randy and Sally tear through the bone zone, vigorously loving everyone in their path. Aw, I love a happy ending. I guess that's the last 40 pages are meant to be, you know, to lock the message down. <laughs> Not quite sure what the zombie butts falling off are supposed to represent, but I'm sure Miss Agnes nailed the metaphor, whatever it is. Okay. Now it's just pervy. Well, that was fun. I learned a lot about sharing affection with the people meet. I meet, being kind and caring, and learning not to judge others. Well, and how to bone mad zombie dames. Let's carry on with the investigation. Did we really need to stop and read five comic books? No, they weren't comic books. They were proper graphic novels. That last one was 40 pages. Or more. <laughs> Designated sleeping area. Look, before we go any further, let me just say that we do at the Miskatonic... What, what we do at the Miskatonic is sometimes a little vicious, or a little sadistic, and even uh, objectively cruel, but it's necessary, alright? The universe is a writhing cauldron of unrelenting malice. We do what we do to make sure that you don't realize that fact. Does it treat the fella as something something? Huh. Well, key to the holding cell. Let's head back to that locked room and check it out. Backtrack, backtrack, fucking backtrack. Uh, there's something behind you, but, eh, whatever. Success. Now let's find out where this goo's coming from. Oh. What's that? It's a brain. A human one. With holes in it. Don't humans need their brains? Usually. Um, yeah. Yeah, they do. There's got to be an explanation for this. The university's still in brains? To extract weird orange brain goo out of them? I mean, why? What's the point? This is probably why they didn't want us in here. Because of brain goose specimen experiments. Yeah. We're gonna have to play it cool, figure out who we can trust at the university, and ask some questions. Well, Rumi's been there a while. 
And I know I can trust a fellow witch. And you can trust a fellow Lizzie? That's adorable. Exactly. That's like half of the faculty right there. Besides, I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation for all this. We just gotta be careful and not get too fired up for insubordination. Get fired for insubordination or treason or whatever. Come on, partner. Let's go do us some sleuthing back at the home base. I gotta admit, this is pretty well written for what it is. So, Charlotte, how was your assignment? Uh, that should be a comma. Good. It was good. Knocked on the door. Waited around for a while. No response. Came home. Then you didn't go inside the outpost. Inside? Oh, no. No. No, 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 no. I didn't go inside. I was told not to, so I didn't. I just knocked on the door and left. Ha! Inside. You crazy. Blech. Right. Well, we'll send a team to investigate and search for our missing researcher. Thank you, Charlotte. We had no intention of sending you on an assignment so early. So, um, what do I do now? You return to your quarters and get some rest. Tomorrow you start patrolling the occult science building. All right. 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 Well. Thank you. Talk, talk to you later, Bob. Looks like we're in the clear, Liz. Are we still being detectives? Damn right. We're going to get to the bottom of this, but for now, let's get some sleep and start investigating tomorrow. Okay. See you tomorrow, Charlotte. I'm going to pray to Yogg-Sothoth. See you, Lizzie. Oh, okay. Is this really what the world looks like? Um, does it, does it not always look like that? There's like chunks missing. And, and chunks added. So the little witch girl had discovered that the university had been harvesting goo from kidnapped prisoners. But what was this strange goo? And why would the university be doing something so dastardly? And, um, just so you know, I had no idea they were what they were planning. I was just a cute French girl that was vivisecting creepy monsters for the sake of education, oui? So don't go accusing all of the university of being dastard- uh, of all being dastardly. Some of us were as dumb of the, as the little witch girl. Why do you keep calling me a dumb little witch girl? I'm exactly the same size as you. Our story resumes with our little witch girl quietly investigating the strange orange goo while keeping up appearances as security guard of the occult science building. <laughs> but what the little witch girl did not know is that her loyalties were being tested at every turn. I'm 22. I'm a grown-ass woman. Voluptuous almost. Good morning, Miskatonic. It's me, Mindy in the Morning, with the Miskatonic Morning Announcement. <sighs> oh man, she stole the posters. What is this morning you speak of? It sounds awful. First off, thanks to our dedicated and highly trained fodder, the Corporeum is now host to a hefty portion of the Thulu Cthulhu Flesh. And all at a record cost of only seven fatalities. Man, I'm getting fat. <laughs> On to international news. The Miskatonic University Canadian Breach is suffering a Yeti investigation brought about by their recent How Many Yetis Can We Get series of experiments. I, can, <laughs> I can't tell if that means the experiments were successful or a failure. They're a human resource department in this building. Only I'm wondering if the best way to start a work day is blaring news about the fucking Yeti apocalypse into my head. Call me crazy. <laughs> uh, 
Oh. Hey, Lizzie. How's it going? What you doing? Give me a grime bath. Keeps all that New England atmosphere off so I don't get any extra bits and bobs sticking out of here and there like the other folks there, here, and there. Secret witchy trick. Want to try some? What's in it? Oh, lavender, rose petals, sandalwood, amber girls, and some guy's blood, mushed worms, horse placenta, powdered dog, and a small assortment of rocks, bacon grease, squirrel, and peppermint for that tingly, fresh feeling. Horse placenta. Like my dead mother used to say, Ain't nothing gets through horse <laughs> gets through horse placenta. She drank a lot. They sent a team to New Orleans to investigate what we found. So we're on errand duty today, I think. Someone needs your help in the library. Okay, when the grime keeps in a little bit, I'll go see what they want. Thanks, Lizzie. Horse placenta. Oh, man. Sorry. I didn't catch on what was going on, and I'm starting to get really tired. <sighs> Let's go ahead and save here. Because this looks like a good spot to save. High dialogue. Well, in a second. Let's save. Let's do the second slot. All right. High dialogue. That's going to make going through the game a bit harder. Show dialogue. How do I show the dialogue? Oh. I just click anywhere and it shows the dialogue. Huh. I found a bug. Is this supposed to be a bug? I mean, it's highlight. Whoa, what? 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 You extended, you extended the click range of all three buttons past the, the buttons themselves, but you made them so that they don't actually work unless it's over the buttons, which means there, there are two sensors in this area, not one. Why, why would you do this? Like, I'm, I'm not even a programmer anymore, and I can tell that th that's more work than you would need to do to do it like this. Uh, all right. But, all right. <laughs> this is an awesome game. I am enjoying the hell out of this, but my throat's getting tired, and it is just now 10 o'clock. I need a shower and a shave, and I need to relax, so... I'm going to call it good here, even though that's going to make a short episode for YouTube. So don't care. Not real sure. I guess, I guess I've been streaming for like two and a half hours. That's not too bad. But I will return back to this as soon as I get a chance to. Um, this is awesome. This is my kind of awesome. I am glad I stumbled onto this game. And the art style is perfect for this. Warren, so you can see more, I will send you warnings so that you know that the, the evil is coming. Because, yeah, this is pretty great. All right. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. You guys have a great night.